Suited connectors are some of the most profitable hands in No Limit Texas Hold'em, but a lot of you in the comments section down below, go down there, say hello, click the like and subscribe button. A lot of you down there tell me that you have trouble playing them. So today, I'm going to help you learn how to stop losing money with suited connectors. Everyone likes to play suited connectors because they can make big post-flop hands like flushes and straights. And it turns out when you make flushes and straights, you usually win. The problem is that a lot of players constantly leak money with these hands when they don't make the nuts. It's way harder to play seven high or a bad pair. So in this video, you're going to learn pre-flop strategy with suited connectors, post-flop strategy with suited connectors, and the number one stake I constantly see from bad players that they make with suited connectors. Let's get right to it. Pre-flop, whenever you have a suited connector, you really want to focus on two major things, your position and the stack depth. While pseudo connectors are pretty good when you're deep stacked, they are not good when you are shallow stacked. You have to stop splashing around trying to cooler your opponents when you have under 25 big blinds or so. And you also want to stop playing pseudo connectors when you are likely to be out of position in the pot, such as when you are in early position and want to raise first in. Let's take a look at a few game theory optimal pre-flop charts. Here we have the under the gun strategy, first act, at a seven-handed table, 40 big blinds deep. The hands in red raise, the hands in gray fold. Take a look at eight, seven suited, seven, six suited, six, five suited, five, four suited. All these low suited connected hands are not really playing. And that's because the stack to pot ratio after the flop is going to be somewhat shallow. And when you do happen to make a really good hand, you're not gonna be able to win a ton of money from your opponent. Also, if you raise, it's kind of likely someone yet to act will re-raise and then you have to fold or call and have a low stack to pot ratio. So it's just not a great spot. So while I would recommend playing 8-7 suited, 7-6, 6-5, 5-4, 4-3, 8-6, of these should simply fold. You don't even get to play them. 40 big blinds deep in early position. Let's take a look at this chart. Here we have the cutoff versus a low jack raise, 20 big blinds deep. The low jack is... First to act if there are six players at the table. So they raise the two big blinds. You're in the cutoff. Hands in green get to play and red get to play. Hands in blue are folding. Notice 9-8 suited, 8-7 suited, 7-6 suited, 6-5 suited, 5-4 suited, 4-3 suited, 10-8 suited, jack-8 suited. All are folding every time or the vast majority of the time. Now, if you told me you wanted to splash around with 8-7 and 9-8 suited, it's probably okay. But the lower ones should just fold. The ones with multiple gaps should just fold. These are not playable hands, even in the cutoff against a two big blind raise. The problem again is that you simply are not deep stacked enough such that when you do make a strong hand, you'll get paid off adequately to make up for all the times that you fail to flop well. So when can you play suited connectors? Well, primarily when you are in position and deep stacked. Of course, always reference Game Theory Optimal pre-flop charts, you'll find that you can raise with suited connectors from the middle positions the vast majority of the time. We have Game Theory Optimal pre-flop charts at pokercoaching.com and in the Poker Coaching app, so make sure you reference those. Here, let's discuss when you're facing a raise, though. So 60 big blinds deep, let's say, the low jack raises, and you are on the button. Now you see the hands in green that get to call include 10-8 suited, 9-7 suited, 8-6 suited, 6-5 suited, 5-4 suited, and everything better than that. And that's because now if you do make a decently strong hand, you stand to win a decent amount of chips, 60 big blinds, right? Also, you'll be able to make better use of the fact that you're in position and that will allow you to steal pots some portion of the time. So notice as you get deeper stacked and as your position gets better, you get to play suited connectors more often. Let's take a look at the button versus a small blind three bet. So you raise the button to let's say two and a half big blinds. Small blind makes it something like nine or 10. What can you call with? Well, take a look at this. The vast majority of suited connectors and gappers get to call the three bet. This is something a lot of people don't do. If they raise nine, six suited on the button and get three bet, they just fold. And that's a mistake, assuming your opponent is playing good, strong, fundamentally sound poker. Now, if your opponent's range is way stronger than it should be because they don't three bet adequately, then you should start folding out the weaker suited connectors and well, the weaker suited gappers, especially like six, four suited, five, three suited, nine, six suited, 10, seven suited, et cetera. 
But you should stick around with stuff like 9, 7, 8, 6, 7, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4. Those are all good enough to continue. That said, suit connectors are way better than offsuit connectors. Notice 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, 7 offsuit are very, very clear folds. If you raise the button in the small blind three bets and you have a connector that's lower medium, you fold. You do not get to see the flop with offsuit hands that are not especially good. That said, whenever you are playing suit connectors before the flop, you really want to focus on being in position and deep stacked. That is when these hands become very, very profitable. Let's talk about post flop. The key to post flop strategy is to categorize your specific hand properly. And there are four types of hands, which we discussed thoroughly in the tournament and cash game masterclass at pokercoaching.com. On the flop, you will have either a premium hand, a marginal made hand, a draw, or junk. And the interesting thing about suited connectors is sometimes they make both. Sometimes they make a marginal hand and a draw, and that gets people in trouble. Typically, you want to play your premium hands and your draws aggressively, and you want to play your marginal hands and junk passively. But notice, sometimes your suited connectors are going to be draws and marginal made hands, and you have to figure out if you should play it aggressively or passively. In general, though, the marginal made hands take priority to some extent, and you should not play those so aggressively. So if you make a pair and a draw and your opponent's trying to load in money, you don't want to. You want to typically play those a little bit cautiously. So after the flop, with suited connectors, you want to make a point to stop overplaying your hand when it is marginal. Believe it or not, pairs and flush draws don't just want to get all of the money in. And also, you want to stop losing pots that you should steal by playing them aggressively when your suited connector turns into junk. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we have eight, six suited. Low jack raises, we're 100 big blinds deep. We call with eight, six suited. Big blind calls too. Flop comes 10, six, three. Low jack, continuation bets, half pot with eight, six suited for second pair and backdoor flush draw and backdoor straight draw. You have an easy call. You do not want to raise here thinking that I can make them fold all their over cards or thinking I have a decent made hand and draw. I'm probably good. You actually probably are good a lot of the time here if the pot stays small. If the pot gets big, that's not necessarily true. You call. Big blind folds. Turn is the two of spades. Low jack bets 20K. They pot it with 72,000 remaining. Now, this is a spot where calling is the only option because when the low jack raises and then continuation bets the flop and then blasts the turn, Against most people, they are going to have, well, most people are going to have in this scenario a good made hand. So what's a good made hand on this board? Aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, sets, ace, ten, king, ten, queen, ten. And if you raise or go all in in this spot, they're not going to fold those. They're not going to put you on the five, four, and then make some super nitty fold with an over pair or even top pair. So... At this point, we're getting the right price to continue if we consider our implied odds because we do have a lot of outs to either make two pair or three of a kind or flush. But if we don't get there on the river and the opponent blasts it, we can just fold because our middle pair is probably no good. This time, though, this player made a mistake and they ripped it all in. They got called. The opponent had pocket queens. And just like that, our hero with the 8-6 suited was out of the tournament. And they thought, oh, it's a cooler. I had a pair and a draw. But no, 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 no. The play here is to call the flop, call the turn, fold the river, and lose some chips. And obviously, when you get there, you don't fold, fold, of course. If you make two pair or three of a kind and your opponent bets, you will get the money in. And if they check, you will get the money in. Let's take a look at another example. Here, the low jack raises. We call 10-9 suited in the cutoff seat, 100 big blinds deep, which is perfectly fine and good. We have 10-9 of spades. Flop comes jack 5-3. Low jack checks. Right off the bat, 10-9 suited on jack 5-3 with one spade can conceivably make a bluff. I don't think it's a mandatory bluff, but in general, with hands that can make better hands fold, that still have some equity when you get called. Uh, these hands often don't mind putting money in the pot. So, consider in this spot, what can you make fold immediately? Well, king high can fold, queen high can fold, lower suited connectors that are junky will just fold. I mean, you have the best hand with 10 high, but if they bet the turn and you have nothing, you have to fold. So making those fold is quite nice too. So I would recommend going ahead and putting in a small bet in this situation. Also, if you get a good turn, 
you can then continue blasting it. That said, this player went check, check. Turns a seven of spades. Lojack checks. What do you think we should do with the 10 nine of spades here? When the turns the seven of spades, we now have a gut shot, straight draw, and a flush draw. Take a second, think about it. Let me know in the comments section down below. Go down there, type in how much you would bet. The pot is 15K. The opponent has checked two times. While you're down there, click the like and subscribe button. Click the notification bell. Thank all of you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. This is a spot where I would start betting big because at this point, when the opponent checks the flop and the turn, they probably have a medium strength hand or garbage. If they have garbage, any bet will get the job done. But in order to get a good ace high or a pair to fold, you're going to need to bet medium or big. I think 10,000 is fine. 15,000 is fine because my goal here is to make all the marginal made hands fold by the river. Hands worse than a jack. So if I can get a seven to fold or five or three to fold or pocket fours, that's what we're going for. So I would bet on the bigger side in the situation, 12K, 10K, 15K, something like that. This time though, the cutoff, let it go. Check, check. Big mistake. You're going to find that draws that cannot win if it checks down very often want to apply aggression when you are checked to. This would be a little bit different if we had maybe a pair and a straight draw or something like that. But here we have 10 high. 10 high can get a lot of better hands to fold by betting. River's a king of hearts. Low jack checks. At this point, I'm definitely going to bet it. And I'm probably going to go pretty big because we have 10 high and the opponent can easily be sitting here with ace high or a low pair. And if you apply a lot of aggression, those will fold. That said, it's a whole lot easier to get these hands to fold if you bet the turn and the river. Right? If you just bet the river, people realize they can call and then see the showdown, which is easy. They know the hand's over if they call. Worst case, they made a slightly loose hero call that didn't work out. But if you bet the turn and then the river, your range looks a whole lot stronger to a lot of players, and they're going to fold. Even hands like ace five or pocket sixes in the spot if you bet the turn and then the river. This time, though, the cutoff messed up again. They let it go check, check, and they lost to ace queen high. What a disaster. Now let's discuss the number one mistake players make with suited connectors. I hope you do not make this mistake, but a lot of people do. The number one mistake small stakes players make is that they do not get maximum value when they make the effective nuts, which is a hand that's almost always good. You have to realize when you make the jack high flush and there's only three of the suit on the board, that's a really, really good hand. It's the effective nuts. You want to play it for a lot of money. The key to winning money with suited connectors is to win your opponent's entire stack when you do make the effective nuts. And sometimes this means using bigger bet sizes than you may be used to. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we have a spot where this player made a big mistake. Under the gun raises to 10K, playing 300K deep, 30 big blind, I'm sorry, 60 big blinds deep. Low jack calls, 8-7 suited on the button, 8-7 of diamonds can definitely call. We see it three ways. Flop comes ace, nine, six. One diamond. We have an open-ended straight draw. Under the gun checks. Low jack checks. This is a fine spot to bet. If we get a straight or a backdoor flush draw, we can definitely continue betting the turn. Uh, when they both check, they probably don't have a whole lot of ace X. They could, but they probably don't. Um, as your opponents get better and better, they will check some aces in this scenario. But a lot of players in small stakes games just bet when they have a good hand in multi-way pots every time. So I'm definitely going to bet here and probably keep betting on a lot of turns. We bet 12K under the gun, plus one calls, the initial razor, and the low jack folds. Turn is the 10 of spades. We make the nuts. Under the gun, plus one checks, pot 66K. How much should we bet? Well, in this spot, we want to go big. You may say, but don't I want to try to get called by pocket jacks? And yeah, it'd be nice to get called by pocket jacks. The problem is, is jacks is not going to call a big bet on the turn and the river, and it would only call a small amount. If your opponent literally turned up their hand and it was pocket jacks, then yeah, you'd probably go smaller. But this is a spot where they can easily have a bad ace, which is not going to fold. They can easily have 10-9, right? They could have check called the flop with some backdoor flush draw, like jack 10 of hearts that just turned a pair that's probably not going to fold to a chunky bet. So this is a very, very nice spot to bet on the larger side. They could also have backdoor spades and they won't fold to a bet either. So here... You want to make a big bet on the turn and then a big bet on the river, probably such that you are all in by the river. I bet something like pot on the turn. This player, though, bet 25K, about 40% pot, thinking, well, I'm, you know, I want to get called by a lot of junk. And you do, but remember, the goal is not to get a little bit of value from a lot of stuff. The goal is to stack your opponent and win, win the entire 100 big blinds or whatever, whatever we started with. 
I'm sorry, 60 people on it. So 60, whatever it is, you want to be blasting it. We bet 25k the opponent calls. River is the two. We have the nuts. Under the gun plus one checks. Here, you got to go big. The pot's 116k. Obviously, you'd rather the pot be bigger. But it is what it is. In this scenario, I would go over pot. I would try to uh, bet very big with my effective nut hands as well as some busted draws. So I would go I would go chunky, like 180k or 150k or something like that. Now, if you know for a fact your opponent is the type of player who will never hero call against an overbet, maybe something like 90% pot is ideal because you really don't want an ace to fold. If your opponent will fold an ace to an overbet, you probably don't want to overbet because that will be the majority of their range that will call a bet, right? Um, so in this scenario, I'm either betting pretty big, like pot or a little bit less, or I am blasting it if I think my opponent is closer to a GTO player that will realize they need to defend some portion of the time and that an ace is pretty good. This time, though, our hero went 70K, which is about, what, two-thirds pot? And this feels like a spot where when you get called, you think, oh, okay, good, I extracted some value. I got money in on the flop and the turn and the river. This is great. But this is a spot where if you just bet big on the turn and then blasted the river, you could have stacked your opponent or won almost their entire stack. Opponent calls, and ooh, they had a good one. Ace six for weird slow played two pair. Typically, you expect them to bet this on the flop, but they decided to be tricky and just check call. And that hand obviously would have called any amount. And I think a lot of just top pairs would call any amount as well. So this is a spot where a lot of people with the eight seven suited feel like they did a good job, but they actually didn't. We started with 60 big blinds. You only got 23 in the pot. That is a blunder when you make the nuts. 10-8 suited. We raise it up in the cutoff to 2.3 big blinds, 60 big blinds deep. Big blind calls. We have 10-8 of spades. Flop comes jack, 9-6. We have open-ended with a backdoor flush draw. Big blind checks. We can definitely bet. Pot is 6K. We go 4K on this very dynamic board. A dynamic board is one where there are lots of straight and flush draws available, but no straight or flush available yet. Typically on those boards, you want to bet on the bigger side with at least some portion of your range. We discussed this thoroughly in the Cash Game and Tournament Masterclass at PokerCoaching.com, so make sure you check those out. Big blind calls. Turns of seven of hearts. We make the nuts again. Big blind checks. There's 14,000 in the pot. We have 54,000 behind. How much should you bet? If you want to quiz yourself, write in the comments section below again. Take a second. Think about it. This is a spot where we want to bet big like pot. Notice if we bet pot and get called, we're going to have about a pot size bet remaining on the river. So we do pot it. We do get called. Pot goes up to 40. Two big blinds. We have 40 big blinds remaining. Notice if on the turn we instead bet half pot, well then we'd have way more than a pot size bet going to the river and it's going to be really hard to get called for a chunky over bet unless your opponent has a really good hand. But by leaving them a pot size bet or even a little bit less going to the river, now they're going to feel somewhat inclined to call with stuff like top pair, which they could easily have. River's a three. Opponent checks. We have 40,000 pots, 42,000. This is the easiest all-in in the world. Do not bet 8,000 to try to get called by any pair. Do not bet half pot. That is a mistake. Rip it in. We rip it in. Opponent calls. They have turn two pair. Unlucky for them. And we stack them. Recognize that sometimes you're going to cooler your opponent. And when you do, you don't want to let them off the hook like we did in the previous example. You want to get all of their money like we did here. So that is it. That is how you stop losing money with suited connectors. Before the flop, always make sure you are focusing on position and stack depth. When you're in position and deep stacked, you get to play a lot of suited connectors and gappers. When you are shallow stacked and out of position, you do not. After the flop, you want to make sure when you have a marginal made hand to go along with your draw, that you stop overplaying it. Marginal made hands want to play small or medium pots. And when you start blasting it, when you get called, you're going to be in bad shape. And also, you want to stop losing pots that you should actively steal by playing aggressively. When you have a draw that cannot win at the showdown, that has good equity, like a straight flush draw or something like that, that is a good time to be loading money into the pot. And finally, get maximum value when you make the nuts. If you do not get maximum value when you make the nuts, you're going to have a tough time winning poker tournaments and poker cash games and hands in general for lots of money because, well, you're not loading it in. A lot of people really focus on trying to get called as opposed to trying to make as much money as possible. It's easy to get called. Just bet one big blind. You'll get called every time, but you'll leave a ton of money on the table. 
That's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, click the like and subscribe buttons. If you have a friend who constantly complains about having trouble with Suda connectors, send them to this video. Thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll talk to you next time.